I have no idea where to go now. It's just one of those things, just being caught out there, caught out there, caught out there. So many of us are. Sometimes there are solutions, solutions you may not expect at all in your life. Give me something nice on that piano. And boys, follow her. He had to be the most elegant man that I ever saw in my life. A vision. I spotted him sitting across the room, still, like a panther, dressed in a black shark skin suit. Perfectly still, green eyes checking out. It was my grandfather's funeral. My mother, nine brothers and sisters, had come to console her. The house was full of people I had never seen before in my life. It was one of those large, extended families. You know the guy. And I saw him sitting in a corner. Being the nine-year-old impetuous person that I was, I walked right up to him. Hey, tell me, who are you? He looked at me with the sincerity of that panther and told me, it's not important who I am. It's not important who I am. It's not important who I am, but who you are. Tell me that now. I was his from that moment on. Heriberto, mi coro, tu coro. Mi corazón es tu corazón. My heart is your heart. He taught me the rules of the great game. States in 1938 at the age of 15, settled in the South Bronx. At that time, it was a free-for-all. Not those pictures that they paint in these days of separated communities, but everyone had the same MO. They were poor, trying to make it. Italiano, Inglandese, Puerto Pequeño, hasta el Julio. Estaba jodido en el South Bronx. He grew up in St. Mary's Park, dipping and dabbing, hanging out, learning this language that was to serve him so well later. When World War II came up, he took his stand. Yo, man, I ain't got no fight with those people over there. Why do I have to go? I mean, these cats ain't cutting me no slack here. Why do I have to go fight for them? Sound familiar? Echoes, 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 echoes from Iraq. He went to the uh, recruiting office after they sent him his letter, but he had a plan. Got a big magazine, one of those old Pulp Fiction magazines. The ones with the picture of a crazy woman on the front cover with a big knife like this. And he walked into the recruiting office laughing <laughs> and paging, <laughs> laughing, <laughs> looking at those pictures of that crazy woman with that knife, her eyes bugged out. And he just stood there laughing, looking at the magazine. They finally called him into the office. Definitely, this was one strange breaking. The recruiting officer asked him straight up, what is wrong with you? Are you prepared 
to fight for your country? <laughs> Man, I don't want to kill nobody. Well, maybe I just want to kill you. 4F immediately threw him out. He was slick. Joined all those homeboys that stayed home during World War II and there was a bunch of them running business on the street. Lived a high life, hustled with those green eyes and that light caramel skin and straight black hair, passed himself off as a Sicilian. Moved down to Elizabeth Street in Little Italy and hooked up with some really seriously bad motherfuckers. Selling my life away, selling my life away, selling my life away. Ten years of the big life. Dealing, wheeling, stealing, corriendo. Until the feds finally caught me. But you know, Louis, the whole thing about it is, they didn't mind when we were doing heroin. But when the white kids from the suburbs started getting strung out, they came and took all of us away. But you play the game, you pay the price. Ten years of my life. Ten years passed. From 1954 to 1964, locked, 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 locked up. Not a peep. No one knew where he was. And then he came home. Me curé. Esa gente estaba como puerco. Cuando salí, estaban de bandido. A different world. And then I met him. Or maybe he met me. Whichever. I was discovered. He went and got a job at the Metropolitan Insurance Company down there uh, by 23rd Street. Something legit. I mean, he really never left the life behind him. He always kept his hand in it somehow. Was selling dope, reaper, marijuana to the executives at the Met. Uh, what are you going to do? Everybody wants to get stoned. They got their lives to lead to. Yeah. He was so slick that one time he saw an empty lot on Longwood Avenue, watched it for two weeks, scoping it out, studying it, and then decided that no one owned the place, no one was really doing anything with it, so he went with his boy Joe, set up a fence, put up a sign, parking, used cars, they had the whole place running. Selling off time, 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 time to unsuspecting motorists. They ran a great business. It was his way. Four years of parking lot with no license. But he made his money. By the time I started getting hooked up with him, he had everything going that I needed to know about the life. One time he took me to go visit this guy to pick up a pound of weed that he was going to sell to the executives over at the Met. He bought it from a Hasidic Jew on a Friday afternoon. The cat was all dressed in black. Took me along. This was a strange sight. Hey, Rabbi, it's a very nice thing to see you. They had grown up together in the South Bronx. The Puerto Rican and the Hasid doing gangster business on a Friday afternoon. We picked up the weed, got out of there. I'm walking along with this shopping bag full of pot. We're down on 138th Street and Brook Avenue, over there by Delta Puerto Rico. And I see this huge crowd coming towards us. Oh my God, the Lamo Head, we're crucified. The Lamo Head, I was a nervous kind of Rican, you know? But he stayed calm and the crowd just kept on coming and coming and coming and I'm nervous and nervous and nervous. And suddenly the crowd opened up. And who was in the middle of that crowd? 
not a policeman, but Mother Teresa. Uh, yeah, yeah. She looked at us, she looked at the crowd, she quickly looked at the back, gave us a little blessing, and kept on walking. What a life. Hey, what are we going to do? We've been blessed. Let's go home and smoke. Went back to the projects, set up a table. I start breaking this brick up, looking. And there was like this simple brown weed on the top. But as I lifted it up, there was this beautiful green skunk weed underneath. This kind of like sensemia, beautiful smoke. Wow, it's a miracle. Mother Teresa turned the reefer from brown to green. Pero que cosa? What are we going to do? Smoke that holy weed. A fumar, a fumar, a fumar. Man, we smoked from 11 o'clock at night to 3 in the morning. Got toasted. Then I got the inspiration to call up the Vatican and tell them, Mother Teresa turned our weed from brown to green. Hello? Hello? Yo, man, is it the Vatican? Is it the Vatican? Is it the Vatican? Yo, man, I got a miracle to report. Yo, she's like a saint. She's like a saint, man. She turned our weed from brown to green. Is it in the niches, the niches, the niches, the niches? The priest on the other end finally got fed up and told us, you need to sleep it off. Go home and eat something. But we've been eating for the last three hours. Just hang up. Sleep it off. Sleep it off. When the Pope decided to beatify Mother Teresa, I remembered that scene and called him up again 20 years later. Yo, you remember us? She turned our weed from brown to green. Sleep it off. Sleep it off. Click. That was just one of our many adventures. Adventures of life in the Bronx. Then came the day when his time was up. Got the big C. Cancer. Ah, oh, Lord, this stuff is killing me, man. Go give me some weed. I can't deal with this chemotherapy. I snuck in three joints to North Central just to get him stoned. And the nurse caught us. That's okay, because he wasn't having any part of it. He wasn't going to go out their way. He was going to go out his way. The one who took it the hardest from that whole dilemma was his daughter Belen, my cousin, the beautiful one. And she, and she, and she, embraces her dying father with the grace of a Madonna as he whispers to her Relieve me of this life I'm leaving Relieve me of all this cancer She squeezes dry skin blood from the tube in his arm onto the floor Each drop an instance of his time As the bloody sea rises around her she sails back in time Back in time, back in time, and it's 17 again, mother of a two-year-old, wife of a barrio gang prez, and a new baby that floats inside of her, but fear grips her heart, because the baby is not her man's, but that of a gang rival's. No abortion in the summer of 1963, she tries everything to relieve her situation. Jumps up and down, eats handfuls of Humphrey's 98 pills. Nothing. Then the day comes, three months in, when she accepts her sin situation. She hops on the bus with her main girl to escape her troubles for the day at Freedom Land. She tries to have fun. As they get ready to go home, 
they hit the bumper cars. As the ride comes to an end, she stands up and suddenly feels a witness, a dizziness, and she, and she, and she sees blood dripping from between her legs onto the floor. Each drop, an instance of a time that would never be. As the bloody sea rises around her, she sails back in time, back in time, back in time in her mind. Her dying father's time comes. She kisses him. And his soul sweeps through hers. Adios mi padre, adios mi papi, adios mi padre. He had asked to have his ashes thrown out over St. Mary's Park, symbolic of his life in the Bronx, symbolic of everything that he ever loved, symbolic of his childhood, symbolic of that time. My brothers and I, we grabbed that urn and we went to St. Mary's, climbing up through brambles and bushes, smoking reefer, drinking beer, getting stoned, just to say goodbye to Adios mi amigo, adios. Adios, mi tío. Adios. Got to the top of this one particular hill he liked, unloosened the urn, took the ashes, and threw them out. And a wind came by and threw the ashes back on my coat. Coño, I knew you were going to stay with me, but I didn't expect you to be this way. When we got back home, my mother asked us, ¿Y qué pasó? Hicieron la cosa, ¿no? ¿Para qué? I didn't have the guts to tell my mother that Uncle Heriberto was now in a dry cleaners on Southern Boulevard. Such life, such funny times, such a man. Such an inspiration. Adios, mi amigo, adios, adios, mi tío, adios. Yeah, yeah, chamaco el gangster. Yeah, yeah, chamaco el guapo. Yeah, 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 yeah,